One of the things I love that Rupert says is how do we turn evidence into belief? And so I've talked today, of course, about some of the evidence that we've found, some of the, the insights that we've found from the research that we've done. But we're not just about research, we're about change. And so turning that evidence into, into belief, into policy, into political change, into public discourse change is a key part of what a new approach is really focused on as well. And from my perspective, there's a, a particular uh, nimbleness that's required. So to have that rigorous evidence and then to think about how the insights from that connect to the concerns and aspirations of whoever it is uh, that has influence and control over a policy, over a, a political decision, over a discussion publicly. So to put that more, more in, in sharp focus, when I go to talk to, say, a, a, a political a political representative of a regional location. I talk about that evidence, I talk about the insights from our research, but I talk about it in a way that is connected to the, the concerns of that regional community, that is connected to the big picture policy concerns of that, co uh, that community, as well as the specific uh, cultural needs of a community. And I think for, for me, that turning evidence into belief really starts from understanding that there are a number of pressures and opportunities in public policy and that arts and culture has both its own uh, needs and opportunities in that, but also it, it's connected to other parts of public, public policy aspirations. We are drowning in evidence in Australia. Uh, not just through the work of a new approach more recently, but for decades we've received um, research reports after research reports speaking definitively about the value of arts and culture to communities. Uh, animating that research and turning it into the belief of politicians and policy makers is absolutely central to what we need to do a as a nation. This morning I rode here on a tram past the State Library of Victoria that institution was imagined within 20 years of European settlement of Victoria, that incredible building that has one of the great reading rooms of the world. That form of cultural inheritance has been a very significant part of the way in which Victoria and Australia has developed. But it's only one part of the story. The important story of Indigenous Australia and all of the elements of that form part of our cultural inheritance. And it's that inheritance that we now have an evidence base about to say how important it is to the livelihoods of today's Australians and future Australians. It's turning that evidence and the significance of that into the belief of our policy, uh, our politicians and our uh, developers of public policy. So one of the things I'm really grateful for is, of course, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, and that includes some of the research work that's been done in, in the UK. When we were thinking about that Middle Australia work, I did look at some of the fantastic willingness to pay studies that have been done in the UK, as well as looking at how some of the arguments had been formed, drawing on the views of different communities within, within the, the broad community in the UK. And that those types of international examples, both, both from there and from other places, have been really important in helping us understand both what the global conversation is about arts and culture and the roles that it plays in our lives today, as well as, as, well as what the specific Australian parts of this are. It oughtn't be surprising to our policymakers that we are where we are in this uh, country right now. Uh, we've had over two centuries of investment in arts and culture. So to have middle Australians actually reporting back in focus groups and through other devices to uh, let the policymakers know that it is important to them, uh, that's actually uh, a success for what the investment has been in the past. Um, what we need to do is to use that evidence base uh, to demonstrate to politicians today that that investment over two centuries has actually paid off and that the investment for the next two centuries is what matters uh, a lot. Uh, and to have the politicians believe that that is true. 
And I think that's really interesting because the, there's a particular Australianness about the idea that, that there's access, that there's opportunity, that whoever you are, there, there should be a place for you to be part of the cultural conversation, a place for you to experience things, a place for you to, a role for you to, to contribute to that cultural growth and that cultural um, place that we are. Actually, it's, you, you're absolutely right. In the Australian context, you can drive for three or four hours to a small country town. On arrival, uh, the museum is there, uh, the library is there, uh, some art gallery is there, some cultural experience is available to anyone who comes into that uh, community. That's, uh, it defines exactly how significant culture has been within an Australian context over a long period of time. Persuading a wider audience that this is what really matters is important too, because we know there are sporting fields and generally a swimming pool. That's Australia today. That's exactly who we are. And access and participation in all of those cultural uh, assets and facilities actually uh, are, are what we wake up to do every day. As you paint that picture of what the cultural life of different communities are across Australia, I think turning evidence into belief, one of the best ways to do it is to actually experience it. And so I, I have worked with a number of politicians and different political leaders and the, for most of them, the moment where it changes, the moment where they have a, aha, I get it, is when they experience it for themselves. Culturally confident leadership is actually what matters hugely. To have our policymakers and our uh, leaders across the country feel confident about participating in, uh, supporting uh, and attending, uh, as well as creating, if that's, uh, uh, if that's what they do, um, is, a, is a really significant part of, of a model of leadership that's appropriate for Australia right now. One of the things that's really striking in the work that we've done so far is the appetite for, for exchange internationally. As you've heard from Rupert, there are people living in Australia from every country on, in the world here. And that's really reflected in that middle Australia work where people are talking about Australia being a place where you can experience uh, the cultures of the world but also that there's a real kind of openness to that concept of there being interesting things from other places and a, a real curiosity and an appetite for exchange, for, for learning about other places, for wanting to experience cultural products from other countries, but, but also the idea that Australia should be in conversation with the world about arts and culture now, about expression now, and about exploring what that means in the 21st century. This is, there's huge amounts of evidence uh, about the role of cultural diplomacy, of exchange, of person-to-person -person links, the, the role, the unique role that arts and culture can play in building those links and in navigating challenging conversations, in navigating shared histories, in exploring what can be possible. But for me, what's really striking is that that's a, a commonly held understanding in Australia. It's not uh, only those who are interested in foreign policy who are concerned about the fact that the rest of the world thinks we're, you know, a bunch of um, people wrestling crocodiles, um, that, that everyday Australians want a, a more nuanced and contemporary uh, understanding of Australia to be shared with the world and for um, for, for the rest of the world to understand that. But also there's, a, I guess, a, a space for the idea that maybe we need to, that we need to and can have a more nuanced understanding of other places as well. There is a new story to be told of Australia now. Uh, Australia, Australia's culture is an ancient culture that's been energised and renewed by the cultures from all around the world. So the way in which we have cultural experiences here, participate in the cultural life of the country, draws deeply on the ancient traditions of Australia, and it draws deeply on all of the culture, uh, the cultural engagement that has been created within Australia uh, since the settlers arrived um, over two, 200 years ago. My direct um, message uh, to a minister in another 
jurisdiction would be to think deeply about what motivates private sector support for arts and culture. Um, in my personal circumstances, I suppose I look back on uh, philanthropic engagement with the arts and cultural sector over, well, I suppose almost 200 years by one measure. If you uh, gather in all of my families, my mother's family and my father's uh, family. Uh, and through that time, I think what we've learned uh, is that supporting uh, cultural infrastructure is really important. Uh, the hardware, if you like, so the buildings and the concert halls and the galleries and the, the construction that goes on uh, for the cultural infrastructure of the country. But it's actually the software that is hugely important. And part of our cultural inheritance are the people that work within the cultural industries that populate the key roles and, and give leadership to the manner in which those organizations are going to be run and maintained. So my, my pleading, um, uh, both to our own jurisdiction, but also to any other jurisdiction, is encourage private giving. Acknowledge private giving. You know, work with philanthropists and with others in the private sector uh, to uh, leverage government support, but for government support to leverage private giving as well. There has to be a symbiotic relationship between private support and public support. Uh, making that marriage work uh, is actually the secret source of uh, ensuring uh, that the arts and cultural sectors will be well supported and enduring into the future.